Hi, I'm Paul Brody, and this is my shop. I'm with Mitch, he's behind the camera. Welcome. We have a, a very interesting project here. I'm helping out a young engineering student. This is his final project. It's an e-mountain bike he's building, and at this stage, he needs some help. So I think I'll just run through what I have here. I'll show you what the issues are, and then I'll talk about what I, I plan to do. So he has a Bosch unit here. You've all heard of, of, of Bosch. I think it's a, a, a pretty nice unit. And there's a mount that goes on that, which is supplied if you want it. And this is it. Here is the fixture that's going to hold it into the jig. But this is the actual mount that goes on there. It goes on like so, fits over like that. This is quite heavy. So I think the first thing we'll do, we've got the weighing scale here. We're just going to see how much things weigh. So this, 1695 grams. So we've got the batteries here. These are also, also made by Bosch. And the weight of one battery, 3,548 grams. And there's two batteries. These batteries go into a down tube, which he has had constructed. It was made at a fab shop in North Vancouver. And they did a nice job on the bending and all that. And the batteries fit pretty well. There's a little bit of slop, that's okay. And then there's the cover. And the cover goes like that. So let's just weigh this whole down tube. It's made out of chromoly, 80 thou wall thickness, which is kind of substantial. So the, the weight for this, 4,367 grams. The actual motor and the cranks, 3,396. So quite a bit of weight. So what has to happen is this goes like so. I line up the, I got a line here and I line it up with the weld. And there's a, there's a space around here. So it doesn't, it doesn't match up all that well. So what I have to do is I'm gonna make a fixture so that this is in line and is at the right angle so everything fits. So I think I've done enough explaining here. So let's go over to the mill and we'll start working on the fixture. That's my countersink. And sometimes what I do, I don't even use, use the table here. Just do it like that. There we go. So that's spaced out the right amount. And that's calculated on how wide, how wide the down tube is. Yeah, I'll get a wrench, make that tight. So the next step to do, I drill these two holes, and these holes are five inches apart. I need to drill and, and tap two holes here, and then this gets bolted on. I'm gonna zero that on the X coordinate. And now I move five inches. I'm just putting in a small thread here. It's gonna be a five mil thread. So the tap drill is a 4.2 mil. Anchor lube works well on aluminum for tapping. I'm using my eyechrometer. That's my eyeball. A student came up with that term, eyechrometer, and we adopted it in Frame Building 101. Okay, so these two holes here, we're gonna put Allen screws through. So this guy goes in here. I made it a, a pretty good fit so it's not sloppy. There we go. 
So we put the screws in. All right, don't have to make these super tight right now, but we'll put a little bit of torque on there. Okay, what I wanna show you here on, on the drawing, see this line here? On the drawing, when I took, I took a, sh a straight line down off the top of the down tube. And so if I put that on there, that goes to that line. So that line is on, on, on this side of the plate. So when I put this on here, because I have to know where this goes. If I don't know where it goes, I'm just guessing. So that's how that fits. And where it gets located, see I take a straight edge. Can you see there? See how that lines up? Can you see that line there? That's where that goes, right, right there. So I, I can check and see if I've got this at the right angle. That's why I did that. So that's what it looks like. And you see I've got a line going across that. It says weld. That's gonna be that weld. That's how far down this whole thing has to come. When that weld is lined up with that line, I know that it's in, in the right position. So my job now is to, is to cut away here. Maybe I have to add something on the bottom. I'm not sure, but this is a good way to work in this situation because I have room around, I can look. That's my fixture, that didn't take that long. So I'll fix up this, get that welded on, and then I have to figure out what to do up here. And so the video is gonna be in at least two segments. On the first part, on the first video, it's gonna be building a front triangle and then chain stays, maybe seat stays. We'll see how it goes. I've got the down tube in place. It's only tacked onto the Bosch shell here. And what I'm doing now is, is fabricating in between, in between the down tube or extending the down tube up to the head tube. And what I've got is a piece of, of chromoly sheet. It's 4130, it's 80 thou. And I've been making these sections here. I've made three sections here. And what I need to do is to cut some cardboard to this shape here and then I have to cut it out of the plate on the bandsaw and file it so it fits nicely. Maybe a little bend on the side, I'm not sure. And then that can get uh, tack welded in. What's gonna happen after this is the down tube will go onto here. There wasn't room to have a section off here that comes up to the head tube and have the top tube there. There was no room to weld in there. So what I'm gonna do now, when, when this part of the down tube is finished, is to cut the, the, uh, the top tube at an angle, and the top tube will get welded on here. I figured that was the best thing to do. Maybe look a little odd, I don't know. We'll see what happens. So next thing to do, grab some cardboard, make up some templates, and cut some chromoly. I have a shape now, so I can I can start to work with that. So that fits pretty. Yeah, that fits pretty well. Okay, off to the bandsaw. So that's going to fit in like that and looks like it needs a bend. It needs to be bent from here to here. But we want to bend it right along there. That's, that's going to be hard to do, especially right up here because that's not going to want to bend there. Or I don't really want to do this. I, I could make this into two pieces and then I'm going to think about it.
Okay, so that looks okay. I think what I'm going to do now, I'll do a little bit of sanding to take all this uh, a coating off, and then I'm going to I'm going to uh, I'll tack weld that in, and then I'll work on this piece here. I decided it was too hard to bend. Okay, so I've taken some masking tape and I've held it in place. I'm trying to look at the edges to make sure that everything lines up fairly well. Okay, so that's gonna work. It has to be, it's gotta be file to fit, but That'll work. Looks pretty good. Well, I think I'll take a little less off and file the last bit because it'd be a real shame now to cut it too short at this point. Oh. Bad. So right here is almost good and then over here I need to file a bit more so not bad for first cut. Okay I think I think that's going to be good. So I'll do a little sanding, a little tacking, and then side two. Okay, tacked and tacked. I want to see if I can hit that down just a little bit. No, I have to I have to pull it in with a, a clamp of some kind. That's pretty good. So that looks okay. So that's that's the left side all tacked, so now we have to cut out some pieces for the right side. That's faster than the last one. I must be getting better or something. So this needs to aim straight down to the bottom bracket and that looks pretty good. I'll go for that. So let's make a, let's make a mark where it is. I'm gonna use the hacksaw we're going to cut it off we're going to leave an eighth of an inch okay so the back of the seat tube or the bottom of the seat tube it's in line with the shell there so so that's so the length is fine now i just have to file it so it gets that rate so it gets a straight section and a radius and no gaps we're going to put a mark on the front here so I'm going to file it and every time I put it on there, that's going to be the front. So I don't put it on there and go, oh, where am I? I, I always need to know where I am. So that's a good way of doing it. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this in the, in the V blocks in the mill and I'm going to take an end mill and I'm going to cut across to, I can actually measure, if I do that, I can see that the flat spot ends right about there. So if I mill out that much, I know it's going to be flat 
and then I just have to file that last radius there. That's going to be easier than filing the whole thing, a lot easier. So that's what it looks like now. This is, this is all flat here and at the back it's raised up. I have to file that now. So we'll go back to the bench. If I put the, if I put the felt pen mark right in the center there, then I know that I'm lined up well that way. File a little bit and then check. You can keep on filing. You could get into trouble. Oh, not bad. So what I got here is a feeler gauge. Oh, it's... So it, it's hitting on the right side. So what that shows is that this might not be perfectly flat because that was milled, so I need to take a bit off there. And it's also hitting at the back. So I need to take a little bit off of this side and the back. Okay, look at that. It goes under there a little bit. So the high spot is between here and here across there and the high spot is also right over here well it is so close I think we'll call that okay. So what we'll do now is to, see, seeing as this is seated here, I want to make a mark where the front is, and I can do it like this. So I took a file and I held it, it perpendicular to the jig. And that's the front. So we're going to put a slot down there now and drill a hole because it's going to be a lot easier to do that now than after it's all welded in and I have to hold this all in the mill. Inch and eight. I'm not a fan of short slots because it's too hard to close up the tube and get a lot of pressure on the seat post. So long slot is sometimes better. It looks like it's in the middle, and I think I'm going to put the hole right about there. There we go. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing the blade against the slot, and I'm making sure that it's straight up and down. I don't want to be like that because I'm going to. Otherwise, the slot's going to wander into the hole. That's not going to look good. There we go, we're through. So now we do this side. And we're through. I've got a little diamond file here. It's a little flat file and it works really well. And I think we're good. I have a special holder, but I'd have to modify something to hold it on there right now. So, okay, so that's, that's temporary. If I measure from the very top of the head tube down to the very front of the seat tube, it's 555 millimeters. So let's see what we've got here. All right, it wants to go back, so. And that there is 555 millimeters, so that's good. 
So it's changed a little bit. We moved it back. So we have to take a little bit off the back of the seat too now because it, it changed slightly. I'm going to call that good. I'm going to check this once more. 555. We're good. Now we do the top tube and then the front triangle is very close. So that's going to go about there like that. We have to cut this so that that lies flat on the down tube. How's that for an accurate angle there? So you can see here how it needs to go down. It, actually, the angle's not bad at all. Can you see over here? Yeah, there, there's the angle. See, see how much it has to come down? Maybe three quarters of an inch. Not, not bad for a rough cut on a hacksaw. It's got to come down like that, so. We're good, look at that. Looks good to me. So if I mark it halfway in the tube, that gives me enough for the mitering. That's just a touch longer there, so that's my mark. Hack sword on this side of the line. So it looks like the mite is going to be right on the drawing, it shows it right there. So we'll go check over here. Looks like it needs to be mited just up a little bit from that line. So it's always good to leave it a bit longer. You can always cut a tube shorter. I have to line this up so that this is flat. So I just put a ruler on there and I use my eyeball. I think that's good. I think that's good. So we're going to have to take off all the all the gray stuff so it goes down to shiny metal and then this can get tacked in. Oh I got a, a couple water bottle bosses first. Be easier to do that now. So what I'm doing is I'm lining this up so that this is horizontal and that's very close just touch more. Okay, I'm calling that horizontal and then if I take my ruler this and I this way and I hold it horizontal, I just scribe the line right on the bottom of the tube. Oh, look at that. Okay, so the water bottle, that looks okay, so that's the back, I'll go with that. The water bottle boss, the water bottle bosses are 2.5 inches apart. If you don't get it right, you can't put the cage on, that's not good. So, we'll get that spacing. There's two and a half inches. Right in line. I think what I want to do first is just to run a TIG weld right across there because 
when this is on, that's going to be hard to do. So that can't take a long time, can it? There we go. So I think we're all, all tacked up here. I think that we can take it out of the jig now, see what it looks like. And then I got a lot of welding to do. That's one heck of a down tube. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. It's been a bit of work here for sure, but hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time. Thank you.